Hello everyone, this is Mario Ricci. I will be presenting a Feral Hog Management Plan for Fort Chaffee Joint Maneuver Training Center. This is for Environmental Management EVSP 501 with American Military University. Quick outline, species overview, location, ecological concerns, policy concerns, and then a quick look at our sources. So feral hogs go by any number of names. You've heard them referred to as pig, swine, razorback, hog, boar, and they're often combined with the terms and preposition by uh, feral or wild. And that includes any number uh, or combination of the uh, original Eurasian boar bloodline, which still exists today in the United States, as well as domestic pigs or a hybrid of the two. According to the United States Department of Agriculture, they are non-native and an invasive species and they're listed as a public nuisance per Arkansas law. They're reported to be in at least 35 states. Uh, some sources state up to 39, and as their numbers continue to grow, currently they're estimated to be over 6 million. They were first introduced to the Americas uh, in the early 1500s by Spanish settlers as a means of free-ranging, low-maintenance food. Uh, that original population continued to grow, thrive, and spread throughout the South, and as time has gone on, We've had uh, populations that escaped, bred, um, or some that were intentionally released and or dispersed by hunters as we got into the late 80s and early 90s. Arkansas law declares any pen-raised pig to be feral after five days of escaping, although if the hunter reports that um, escaped pig, uh, they are declared feral after 10 days. Arkansas law also prohibits the sale, transport, and possession of any live feral hogs, as do many other states. They are very vigorous reproducers. They have little natural predators and an average lifespan of roughly six and a half years. There are a number of factors uh, that are included in this, but on average, a female may farrow or birth uh, 12 or more piglets in a year. Um, roughly half of that number uh, six of those are going to be uh, females and within six months those female pigs are going to reach sexual maturity so again one year after they've reached sexual maturity they could potentially have 12 or more piglets uh, themselves so once piglets grow above 15 pounds their natural predators uh, significantly shrink and especially outside of areas that don't have large natural predators in the united states and of course uh, most of the pig population is spread throughout the south and the, the, the uh, southeastern portions of the united states whereas our larger natural predators wolves bears and cougars are going to be further to the north and northwestern portions of the United States, so their territories really don't overlap. So Fort Chaffee and surrounding areas, uh, Fort Chaffee is a military installation. Uh, sometimes it's referred to as a Fort Chaffee Wildlife Management Area, or uh, as mentioned previously, Fort Chaffee Joint Maneuver Training Center. It's a 65,000 acre army post that spans four counties. It is located in uh, west central Arkansas, uh, relatively close to the Oklahoma border, and it's also located in what's known as the River Valley region. If you take a look up to the northern portion of that wildlife management area, you can see that uh, a portion of it actually crosses the Arkansas River. It's an active air to ground uh, and artillery range for both artillery pieces and tanks uh, with a restricted impact zone. And uh, almost daily, uh, they conduct live fire training and maneuvers on base, uh, whether it's Army personnel, uh, the Department of Energy training facility, uh, or Naval Special Warfare ground training personnel. It is open to the public after a small fee and an orientation course, which is good for two years. And uh, you can identify here that it is a relatively rural area, uh, mostly surrounding this base or wildlife management area is going to be rural farmland. Um, further to the south, you can see what looks like somewhat of a developed area. That's the community of Greenwood. That's an older established community. And as you get closer up right against that uh, installation, there's really nothing separating it um, other than a fire break. And then up to the northwest portions, you can see a developed area as well. Uh, more specifically, that kind of north to south running rectangular area 
and just to the west of that. That's going to be a 7,000 acre commercial and residential new development known as Chaffee Crossing, which has brought a lot of money and residents to the area. As mentioned, it is a uh, state authorized wildlife management area, which is under uh, partial control of the Arkansas Game and Fish Commission. But given its designation as a military installation, uh, it has a separate set of restrictive rules which they operate by. Moving on to the ecology, there's varying terrain uh, roughly from 400 to 870 feet above sea level, so it's not very high in altitude. There's open grasslands or savannas, uh, dense undergrowth, there's hardwoods and conifers. You know, you'll take a look here in a second, you can see several ridges and hills, there are draws, rocky outcroppings. Uh, there are multiple ponds, lakes, swamps, and creeks that run through this property as well. And it's home to an abundance of wildlife, which can also be found in the surrounding areas. But given the restricted access of this uh, base or wildlife management area, uh, some of those populations can tend to thrive here. Uh, it is popular for bird watchers, anglers, and hunters, as well as horseback riders. Black bear, white-tailed deer, and feral hogs are going to be the largest mammals on base. Uh, there is currently no black bear hunting season on base, as there is not a very large uh, population on this base. Some of the smaller mammals are going to include beaver, fox, coyote, rabbit, squirrel, and your smaller rodents. Some of the bird species are going to be the bobwhite quail which they do have a hunting season uh, on this installation and in Arkansas. Uh, just a side note is there is uh, currently a uh, habitat management plan in place in Arkansas for the bobwhite quail to kind of bring back some of their uh, original habitat. There's also red-headed woodpecker, rove runners, swallows, warblers, buntings. There's a relatively healthy turkey population as well as resident and transient Canada goose and a variety of duck species. Chaffee is also home to a number of insects, reptiles, amphibians, and fishes that you are typically going to find in your southern forested areas or uh, creeks, lakes, or ponds. And again, given the fact that it's a military installation, it does have a relatively stable ecosystem outside of the fact that uh, the pig populations continue to grow. That's currently the greatest threat to this installation. So I wanted to bring you back here so you can identify some of those features which I talked about. You can see the ridges, you can see those grasslands, you can tell where the densely forested areas are, as well as the ponds, lakes, and creeks running through. You can also get a little bit better look down to the southwest portion uh, where you can see that community of greenwood that's right up against the fire break. And then up to the northwest you can see that newer Chaffee Crossing development area. Uh, while we're on this uh, slide. I also want to point out uh, something I'm going to talk about here in a second, which is the uh, potential um, intentional release of pig populations or the neg negligent escape. So down to the southeastern portions of this base is where uh, the biologists have trapped more of your darker um, uh, darker pigs that have uh, that more Eurasian bloodline, kind of that, that European boar look. Uh, north central uh, around Christmas Knob is where they see a lot of white-faced pigs that they typically trap or exterminate. Uh, south central and uh, perhaps kind of more uh, southwest in that, that greener forested area that you see kind of uh, rounded in the center. They see a lot more of your pig, fa pig color, uh, I'm sorry, red color phased pigs in that area and then off to the northwest uh, getting closer to uh, Chaffee Crossing is where they see a lot of Oreo. So uh, the, the different groups of pigs there is a uh, potential suggestion of uh, various pig, um, pig releasings or negligent escapes that have established communities in those various areas. So ecological concerns associated with their population growth is as they continue to reproduce and expand out in their territory, they're damaging agriculture and property. So um, their habits cause an estimated 1.5 billion in annual damages. 17 million of that is gonna be in Arkansas alone. They wallow, root up, and consume agricultural land, uh, pasture, and crops. So what they're doing is they're competing against human farming efforts 
as well as the native species that rely on um, those crops and mast for sustenance. And uh, back to the rooting and wallowing, uh, as they turn up that soil, that freshly turned soil is going to cause erosion and it's also going to invite the spread of invasive plant species as well. Feral hogs are known to carry at least 40 parasites and 30 different diseases, one of which is brucellosis, which is an infectious bacterial disease. It causes fever, aches, chilling, um, and it can uh, take up to two weeks before you even notice any of these symptoms. If left untreated, it could get... Uh, pretty serious, but there are typically not very many deaths associated with it. Uh, so there are urine and feces that are left from large groups of pigs, sometimes known as a, uh, a team, a sound, or a passel. Uh, as they're highly concentrated in areas, they're going to contaminate that soil and damage the water quality. So again, the animals that are natural to that area that rely on uh, vegetation and the water for sustenance and to thrive are going to be getting contaminated soil and water um, or sustenance as a result of these uh, large numbers of pigs. And then of course they have an unsustainable reproduction rate uh, which continues to grow and it's going to compound the areas where they're able to breed freely. So as mentioned previously this is a relatively restricted area and within the base itself in the central portion of the base there is an impact zone where even uh, several base personnel are not allowed to go due to uh, potential unexploded ordnance. So policy concerns. Uh, the locals fear as though uh, simply not enough is being done to tame the population. The newer residents to the area are concerned about their property damage and uh, just in general the, the appearance associated with wild pigs running through their new markets and their new communities. The hunters are complaining that the growing numbers are affecting deer, squirrel, and other uh, game animal hunting opportunities on the base. Uh, but despite that, many of the hunters are not aware that the number of hogs that are actually taken off post each year. Uh, this past year, 2020, was the first year that the United States Department of Agriculture came out for helicopter hunting, and they took 751 pigs off of that base in a matter of uh, roughly four days. But despite those concerns from the hunters and the residents, there still continues to be the possibility of releases or uh, negligent escapes, um, which are going to continue to affect that population spread. Funding, of course, is a general concern, as with most policies or programs that you're trying to enact. Uh, there simply isn't enough funding or education to go around. And the greatest controversy here is meeting the needs of controlling the hog population while ensuring that your hunters and your local residents, which are contributing to uh, these programs economically, are being satisfied. Here's a look at our sources and our list of figures. Thank you.